All right, and we are back at it today. Um, we are going to be looking at uh, Unit 4, Lesson 2, um, which are equivalent forms of absolute value equations. Uh, and what you're going to see is that really um, what we want to do is try to find a way to get it into a form that we already know how to work with. So um, we're going to start with a little exploration. So you're going to go to desmos.com uh, backslash calculator. You can see that there at the top of the notes. Um, and here's what I want you to do. All right, so you have three graphs there, A, B, and C. All right, so I want you to type in, all right, into Desmos these three equations. All right, so type these into Desmos, all right, just like I did here. I'll select one so we can show you. So there's that equation, all right, and you can see that I have all three equations typed into Desmos, all right, so you can see those, all right, and then here's what I want to do. All right, so notice that A, B, and C are not in the form that we are used to here, right? So um, we are used to just X minus H on the inside. And so notice we don't have that uh, on our three graphs here. So what I want you to do is see if you can find an equivalent equation, all right, in this form that will give us this same graph here. All right, so I want you to pause the video, go to Desmos, play around a little bit um, with what you see, and see if you can find an equation in HK form that will give us the same graph that you have here in A, B, and C. All right, so pause the video, see what you can do, turn it back on, and we'll go through this together. All right, so hopefully um, you saw some patterns here. So but let's go to decimals real quick and see what we did here. All right, so here is um, A. Now, what I know from A is that we have the vertex of 2, negative 4. So from everything that we know so far, if I have a vertex of 2, um, negative 4, I can type that in like this. And I get a graph that has the same vertex. So what I know now is I just have to find the right A value to make my blue graph match my A or make, match my uh, red graph. So I'm going to start with 2 because it already had a 2 out front. Um, and I got a little closer. All right, so I know I need to go a little bigger. So I'm going to go with 3 here. A little closer. Go with 4. A little closer. 5. Oh, no, that was four again, sorry. <laughs> Five. And then notice I get to six here. All right. So when I have that six, I get the exact same graph. So what I can see here on A is that this would be Y equals six times the absolute value of X minus two minus four. All right. So there's that equivalent form. So notice this gives us the same thing as this equation. All right. So let's see what happened when you did B. So if I go to B, all right, so once again, I can use my knowledge of HK to start with a base to work from. So Y equals, and I can see that my vertex is negative 1, 0, so I know it should be X plus 1, just like that. Now, once again, um, my blue graph opens up, so I know it has to be negative to open down. And then once again, I'm going to go through that same kind of process to see if I can get to um, the equivalent form. So I'm going to start with 2. I get a little closer. And if I put a negative 3 a little closer, and then what I see is when I get to negative 4, I get that exact same match. So if I go back to here, y equals negative 4 and then x plus 1. Oh, and you know what I did? I left the plus 2 off of that. So that was, but if I go back and add the plus 2 here, and I add the plus 2 here, uh, I get the same match. So I apologize for doing that, but uh, you can see that it has the same effect. All right, so let's make sure on C that I typed it incorrectly. Oh, I did type it incorrectly on C. All right, and then once again, uh, if I start with what I know, I can see with my HK here that I have a vertex at 2, negative 9. So I know it would look like that. And then once again, I just have to adjust that A value um, until I get to something that matches. So I start with 2. I'm going to jump to 4, I'm going to jump to 6, and then I jump to 8, and now I get an exact match. All right, so hopefully you figured all of that out as well. So we get to y equals, and then this is 8, and we get x minus 2 minus 9. Okay, and now hopefully you see the pattern here. So here is the pattern that we looked at. If we look right here, there's a GCF. All right, and that GCF is 3 and I can factor that out like that 
Now, what I can do is take that 3 to the outside, right? So the absolute value of 3 is 3, and then when I take it to the outside of that absolute value, it gets multiplied by that 2, and that's where the 6 comes from. Same thing in B here. I have that negative on the outside. Notice my GCF of that expression on the inside is 4. So I can factor that 4 out. And then I take that 4 outside times the negative 1. There's the negative 4. And then same thing here. If I look at that GCF on the inside of this expression, once again it's 4. That leaves me x minus 2. And then I can take that 4 to the outside. And 4 times 2 is 8. All right, so there's the pattern. All right, so let's go ahead and just summarize um, what we have to do. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to factor out the GCF of, and I'll say that we have this form here, this BX minus M here, right? And I'll put right here, this is the inside of our absolute values. That's what we want to do. Right, so we want to factor out that GCF of the inside of the absolute value. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to take the absolute value of that GCF, right? We have to perform that. So we want to take the absolute value of the GCF, because that GCF could be negative, all right? So we could have like negative 4x plus 4, we could factor out negative 4 uh, with that, okay? And then 3 is we want to multiply the GCF, all right, with the A value that was already on the outside, okay? And that's really the process, right? So when we think about it going back up here, I'm going to factor out the 3. The absolute value of 3 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6, right? Factor out the 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, all right? So we want to do that. Now, notice in all of these problems, all right, I'm just going to put a star here. So notice in all of this, our k value never changed, right? So it had no effect, all right, on that k value, all right? So notice, right, up here, we had minus 4, we still have minus 4. We had plus 2, if you put it in the problem, I left it out there, but plus 2, and then minus 9 and minus 9. Okay, all right. So now, by doing this, notice we get back to that hk form. We get back to what we already know to be true, okay? So why do we want to be able to do this? All right, so I'm going to go through um, two examples with you, uh, both with graphing and solving, and show you why this is advantageous for us, okay? Um, so now, if you would flip the page, all right, and look at problem three here, all right? So when you look at problem three, notice this is not in our typical HK form to graph. So we want to get it into our HK form to graph. So I'm going to go through this process. So now notice, what's our GCF here? All right, it's 3, and then I have x minus 1 like that, correct? And now the absolute value of 3 is 3, and I take that outside to multiply. Notice we have a 1 on the outside, so when I take it to the outside, I end up with just 3 like this. All right, so by doing this, we can now shift this into things that we already know, and we already know how to graph this absolute value in this form. So instead of learning something new, all right, We've learned a technique to get into something that we're already familiar with, and now I know my vertex is 1, negative 4. I know it opens up, it has a positive A value, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 1, 2, 3, and 1. All right. And there's our graph. So there's why we want to know how to do this with graphing. Okay, so now. Why would we want to know this with solving? Okay, so now um, let's skip the rest of the graphs. We're going to do some of those in class and as a group practice. Let's skip to, all right, number seven here where it says whole class practice. All right, so now when we look at this, all right, I want to solve this equation. Now what we talked about is that we really want like terms here, right? So I really want this to be, if this is an x plus 5, I really want this to be an x plus 5. Well, notice what we can do here. All right, I'm going to leave the left side alone for now and just bring it down. And so notice I can factor out my GCF here, and it would look like that. And then now I can take the absolute value of 4, which is 4, and multiply that, that times the A value, which is on the outside, which is 2, and 2 times 4 is 8. 
and notice what I have done now. Now I have created like terms. This absolute value of x plus 5 is just like that absolute value of x plus 5. So notice I can subtract this from both sides. I can treat those just like like terms. So negative 5 times the absolute value of x plus 5 minus 9 equals 11. I can add 9 to both sides. So negative 5 times x plus 5 equals 20. I can divide by negative 5 on both sides. I get to the absolute value of x plus 5 equals negative 4. And what do we know about an absolute value? It can never equal to a negative number. So what I now know is that this is a no solution problem. All right. So you can see that having this idea of an equivalent form and how to go from the complicated form to our HK form allows us to then use what we already know. All right. So that's it for today. We will come back into class tomorrow. Um, so be sure to fill out your um, video check-in for this. Let us know what you still have questions about, what you um, need uh, more help with and what you understood and then we will see you in class next time.